Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm going to talk about some resources for beginner quilters. I've actually had a lot of emails recently, actually over the past year, I believe a lot of people have taken up sewing and quilting or gone back to it. Uh, maybe it was something that they did years ago and now maybe they want to go back to it and learn more. And so I get a lot of beginner questions. How do I get started? What should I do? What are, Where can I find out more information so that I can jump into this wonderful hobby? So today's video is just going to be a, a little conversation with a lot of links and resources for beginner quilters. I'm going to talk a little bit about what you really need to get a start started, what's essential for starting to quilt, and then also give you links where you can get more information on those products or some of them are techniques. And also for quite a few of the things I'm going to talk about, we've already filmed videos so I can direct you to some of those videos where you can get even more information on the topic. So we're going to get started and the number one thing you need is a sewing machine, of course. And it doesn't have to be an expensive pricey machine. I've seen people come to class with very inexpensive sewing machines and do just fine. The one thing you need to make sure of is that it is in good working order and that you know how to use it. And with YouTube, you should be able to find a tutorial for just about any sewing machine that you would purchase. Or if you buy a new one, you can often get classes from the shop where you purchase the machine from. So just make sure that you buy a machine that's within your budget and that you understand how to work it and that it's in good working order. Make sure that you're not having bobbin or tension issues. That's the number one thing. I, I always feel so sad when someone comes to class and their machine has so many problems that they can't enjoy the class. So just get a, a machine in good working order that you like and it doesn't have to be pricey. I sew myself personally on a Janome Memory Craft 6600 Professional, which I've had for several years and I really love. I've sewn on really nice Berninas when I've taught and I love those too. And I have also sew on a just a really inexpensive Janome Gem when I travel. So all of them are fine. Really, you just need to make sure that you can have a nice straight seam and you don't need any fancy stitches for quilting. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about the sewing machine. But there are lots of other tools and notions that you need. Um, scissors, it's really important to have a nice uh, dressmaker style pair of scissors. I love these Kai scissors. They are very sharp and very comfortable and lightweight. You'll also want to have some smaller scissors and I have several different ones that I use. These are a, a Dovo small scissor. I also have a really tiny one that I use that I keep in my sewing bag, but I have links to some of my favorite scissors that I can put up for you. You will also need a rotary cutter, and there are lots of different brands. I love the Ulfa, and I just love the regular. It just seems to be the easiest to use in the 45 millimeter size. There are also bigger ones and smaller ones, and so just try them out and get whichever one works for you. I have been using the Ulfa Endurance Blades. I do feel like they last longer and save me a bit of money there. You'll need an acrylic ruler. This is just a, one that I've been using on some smaller projects. Lately it's a four and a half by eight and a half. I really do love this size for working with smaller pieces, but you'll really want a 12 and a half or 12 inch size and maybe even a 24, eight and a half by 24 inch. But again, I've got a link that I will put where I have lots more information on rulers. This cutting mat on my table is an Ulfa self-healing cutting mat and you'll want to get one of those. Again, they come in a wide variety of sizes so you might not need to purchase a big one right away. I believe I had a 24 inch by maybe 18 inch that I used for quite a long time and which works just fine. 
Pins and a pin cushion are essential. And again, they don't have to be any specific type. You might want to play around with pins and see what you like best. These are the ones I'm using now. They are magic pins and they just are, are I love the little handle on them that makes it easy to grab onto. And they're also really smooth and they glide in and out of the fabric easy. So I'll put a link to those as well. I've also used other pins, specialty pins, and I have used clover pins before as well, but right now I'm just loving these. An iron and an ironing board, you will want to make sure you have a great iron, and I have a whole blog post on that, and it has information about the iron that I've been using for a few years now and that I really love. And the ironing board, my ironing board just came from Costco. Um, so I feel like just get a, a one that works in your space. You'll want a seam ripper. I love the Clover seam ripper, and I actually have one at my machine and one in my sewing bag. Just I just like the way it fits in my hand and that it stays sharp. Okay, one more notion on the list of essentials is the Clover Wonder Clip. And these come in packages of 10, I think 25 and 50. Get as many as you can. They are great for binding your quilts and also for holding pieces of fabric together instead of pins. I don't like getting stuck by pins and so these Clover Wonder Clips are one of my essentials. After you have some of those basic tools, you're ready to get started. You'll want to pick out some thread. And again, I love Aurifil 50 weight and I use it for piecing. I use it for hand stitching my bindings and it works great on my machine. Some people that I've seen might have to play around with different thread choices to get one that works really well with their machine. But use the best quality thread that you can and just make sure that it works with your machine. I, I know people that haven't been happy with Aurifil and the way that it works with their machine and they have found different brands. So just get what works for you on thread. Fabric, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Use good quality fabric. I, I know that fabric is pricey and it has gone up even more recently with shipping and other expenses. Uh, I only see fabric as going up, but it's still good to use the best quality that you can because if you're going to put all this time into making a quilt, you don't want your project to fray or the colors to fade. And so purchasing your fabric from an independent quilt retailer is the best option. Reference, I've mentioned this before. This is a really handy quilter's reference tool. It just has tables and charts and, uh, and in the back it, it gives you directions for binding. There are some simple block patterns that you can use to kind of play around with. And it just has so much information. It's great for beginners. And I refer to this book a lot of times just because there are some charts in here for different formulas that it will make it to where I don't have to do the math. I can just look it up on the chart. Okay, pick out your favorite fabrics, use fabrics that you love. And I have a whole lot of resources that we've done over the years on building a fabric stash. So I've got posts on building a stash, on purchasing background fabric, prints, what to do if you like to collect novelty prints, and I've got posts on choosing fabric and for managing your fabric and storing it and organizing it once you have some fabric to start with. That can all be a little overwhelming though, so just start with the fabric that you need for one project if you're an, a very beginner. And if you're also a very beginner, start at the beginning figuring out how you want to save your scraps or project leftovers. And again, we've got lots of posts and videos even on fabric that I will link to so that you can get that other information. Uh, you'll also want right away, I would suggest um, project organization tools. So whether that's plastic bins or bags or using a drawer or one of those plastic 
rolling carts, just decide pretty early on on how you're going to organize your projects. It'll save you time in the long run to have some simple storage option, um, even a, a spare shelf where you can put everything just so that you have a place to put your project when you're not working on it. The next thing on my list is just a whole list of techniques that beginners might want to know. One of them is fabric preparation. How, what do you need to do to your fabric before you start working on a project? Another post and video I have is on uh, accurate measuring and cutting. That is really important. The measuring and the cutting you'll find you might make more mistakes there than you do in the actual sewing. Once you've got those things down, you'll also want to get some basic information on cutting and sewing strip sets, which is when you take a long strip of fabric and sew it to another longer strip of fabric so that you can save time down the road in in your piecing of the block. So learning to use strip sets will save you a lot of time and increase your accuracy. Then I guess probably most important is that you need to get your quarter inch seam allowance down. And I do have a video where I show you a couple of different techniques you can use. You will want to practice sewing your one quarter inch seam and measuring it and if you're having trouble keeping it accurate, there are some great tips. You can put tape on your machine. You can experiment with moving your needle. Uh, but anyway, we detail all of those in the quarter inch seam allowance video, which actually might have been one of the first videos that I filmed. Um, might be due for an update, but if we update it, we won't take the original one down until we've redone that. Another technique that is great for you to master is the easy corner technique. And we do have a video on that. It appears in a lot of quilt patterns. And there's a ruler that I recommend for that, the mini simple folded corners ruler that really helps you with that technique. And it really does appear in lots of different block patterns. You'll want to learn um, how to make accurate half square triangles. Half square triangles are the foundation for a lot of different quilt blocks. And we do have several different videos, I think three, with three different methods, using specialty ruler, uh, tr tr making them larger and trimming them down, and also using the triangle paper. So those are great resources for beginner quilters because if your half square triangles are the correct size, it's going to make putting your block together all the easier. Another technique you'll want to learn as a beginner is how to make flying geese. Again, that's another unit that shows up in a lot of quilt blocks. If you love stars, you're going to be making probably a lot of flying geese. And I do have one or two videos, I believe, on flying geese. Lately, I've been using the Block Lock flying geese rulers for my flying geese, especially for the smaller ones. It just really helps with accuracy. And I feel like they're not as essential for larger flying geese, which are easier to make accurate on your own. But for anything finishing at two inches by four inches or smaller, you probably want to use the Black Lock flying geese rulers. Finally, the quarter square triangle is another kind of foundational block that shows up in a lot of quilt blocks. So I do have a video on how to make perfect quarter square triangles. And again, those are great to make a little bit oversized and trim down because they can be a little bit tricky with the bias in the fabric. Once you've got those basic techniques down, you can really pretty much start just about any quilt project that you want to. I always recommend that you pick something that is more simple to begin with, more simple squares and rectangles and not a lot of specialty units in the blocks. But if your quarter inch seam allowance is good and you can make accurate half square triangles and flying geese, you really should be good to go into making any quilt project that you would like to. It's always good to start with smaller projects to build your confidence and to just kind of um, give yourself that I can do it feeling, I guess. 
once you've got those techniques down, a lot of projects have borders. And so learning how to properly add a border is another thing that beginner quilters often struggle with. You want to be sure that you've measured your quilt and your border and that you don't just use the measurements in the pattern without making sure that your quilt also measures that size. If, if your quilt comes out differently from the pattern, you can easily update it or uh, you know, add the borders to the specific size that you need. So I always tell beginner quilters, don't cut your borders until your the center of your quilt is completely sewn. But I do have a post and a video on borders as well. And then the finishing is binding. Um, this is assuming that you're sending it out to have somebody quilt it. I do have a couple posts on doing some simple straight line quilting on your machine. But binding is really the finishing touch. And I have, I believe, three or maybe four videos on binding. I have binding part one and binding part two, which walks you through putting, attaching the binding to your quilt. And then I do have a fun video on making scrappy binding. And then finally, we just recently did a video on hand stitching the binding to the other, to the back side of your quilt after you've done the machine work. So that is pretty much all of a list of all of the basics that you need if you're a new or beginner quilter or you're looking for more information. As I mentioned, we'll have a blog post, we'll have lots of links in the description below and also a link to the blog post where you can find even more information on all of these topics. But I hope that you won't be intimidated by this hobby. There is so much information out there and it is really easy to get started and begin your quilting journey. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you'll share it with a friend, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for stopping by.